Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of Wednesday Night of Talk Nerdy to Me. As I speak right at this very millisecond, there's not a single person watching this show. So there we go. <laughs> Two people have just joined us. So I was a bit worried there for a while. Holy guacamole. They thought, oh, what a way to waste a Wednesday night by joining it with us. So anyway, g'day guys. Colin Parkinson. G'day Colin. How you going, old son? All the numbers are streaming up to number four. How good is that? <laughs> anyway, before I get too excited, I've got to introduce my fellow lads. I have MPS and Jeffro. How are we, boys? Good. Oh, good evening, all. Welcome, nerds. Um, so we're now going to uh, move on to our discussion of the year. The year. What's the year? What year is it? We're going from 1969, and Michelle said this is a very good year for her because that's when she came into being, as it were. So there you go. So MPS, what have you got for us? Some funky stuff. The, obviously, the moon landing is the most common one, but uh, other than that, yeah. uh, 1969, what do you got for us, old son? Well, 1969 had a lot of uh, space type of talk. You know, the Soviet Union launched a whole bunch of uh, satellites and, and stuff out to Venus. Um, two cosmonauts did a spacewalk. Uh, yeah, so there was a whole, yeah. <laughs> um, so there were a whole lot of sort of space related things. The Apollo 9 program returned back to Earth. Yeah, so we'll, we'll bypass all of that because 69 was the year of space, essentially. Uh, a little bit less, uh, a little bit lower than space. Uh, the Boeing 747 jumbo jet is flown for the first time, taking off uh, from from uh, Everett uh, Airfield in Washington. Um, the first Concorde test flight is conducted. Uh, the Navy, the U.S. Navy establishes the Navy Fighter Weapons School, which is Top Gun. Oh, golly. Yeah, there you go, 1969. Um, uh, Dr. Denton Cooley implants the first temporary artificial heart. So it's a bit of a bit of a medical one for you. So they stick I think the heart in, they go, but it's not working. They go, shit, where are the batteries? Quick, get the ever ready. Holler from Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. Uh, in terms of other interesting things, there was the first ATM in the US is installed in Rockefeller Center. <laughs> Golly. Not an ATM machine because that's automatic teller machine machine, if you remember that commercial. Uh, just like PIN number is a personal identification number number. Isn't it uh, funny because you mentioned about ATMs. When they first came out, people thinking, oh, yeah, it's not such a big deal. But then we got so used to them. That you couldn't live without an ATM, and then when they started taking them away, it's almost like you just saw the whole lifestyle of the of the technology from birth to death, effectively. And now people don't really care about them that much, but for a period of time, they were the greatest invention of all time. So, there you go. Well, I remember back in the eighties when the first one sort of hit Melbourne. Um, my mum had a a card, and it was a weird experience to be on in front of the bank on a Sunday morning, punching out and getting money. It was just really weird, but that's what happened. Yep. Uh, the Boeing 747 in December, so I think it was uh, January or something, uh, actually made its first passenger flight, carried 191 people. Uh, what is it with you and planes, dude? Move on. I mean, Michael's mentioned about Woodstock. That's exciting stuff, think... dude. Bloody planes. You give your planes a flick. Move on. Give us some Woodstock action. Oh, well, I didn't see the Woodstock one, but, yeah, Woodstock happened in 1969. Uh, the oh, – I don't know how to pronounce this – but um, Apronet link is established, which is the the beginnings of the global internet. Yeah, it became uh, DARPAnet, right. actually. Yeah, yeah, along the way. Oh, yep. then, okay, yeah. Um, uh, in terms of the last most uh, interesting technical one, I think uh, I might be covering off Jeffrey's area here, is regular colour television broadcasts begin on BBC One and <laughs> ITV in the UK. There you go. So there, that's what I got in terms of that. Uh, in terms of the most technological side of things. 
Very good stuff. So there you go. And speaking, sticking on the airplane theme, Michael Herbert made a mention about an aircraft carrier that just yeah, it crashes into ships. And yeah, it was a very, we try to stick on the positive side here, uh, Michael. We don't like to be uh, miserable all the time. So uh, there you go. So Woodstock, yeah, absolutely awesome time. So uh, the, when the hippie era was at its peak. So how good is that? Now, I don't know if Jeffro's coming back. Uh, Jeffro, are you able to talk to us or not? Yeah. All right, it's your turn. What have you got for us from? Uh, I hope so. So for um, uh, 1969 in the UK, it was it was fairly light on. So probably the one that most people. No, oh. I'm in the middle of a drink and he stops. Mm. Yeah, here is what yeah, so, so light on. Yeah, go on. Is that uh, for 1969 in the UK? It was fairly light on, but most people would tend to remember if anything the uh, infamous uh, the, the people would tend to remember the uh, the beetle on uh, yeah. the rooftop no i think we've lost him so, so i do in uh, yeah. 1969 so uh, uh, it was also the year that John Lennon gave his MBE back. So, all right, I left it in go. All right, so, all right, I know Jeffrey, you can probably hear us at the moment, but I'm gonna have to sort of let you sit there and uh, chill out for a little bit. So, uh, all right, so we move on. So, uh, movies for that year, 1969. Actually, in terms of sci-fi movies, there wasn't a great deal. Actually, there was like a like we're in that period where we moved out of the 50s and we got into the 60s and we're all the psychedelic thing going on. It's the new world and everything's sort of changing and going on uh, and happening. So there's a lot of film that got released. So there, I just picked out a handful. So I'm going to bring Jeffro back so he's part of the show at least and see what's going on. So one of the films that came out after that year was called uh, Moon Zero Two from Hammer. So, like Hammer, Hammer were known for all the, their Dracula and horror films right. and all the rest of it. And it was actually classed as a space western. So, and ironically, it was set in the year 2021. So it's actually next year. How about that? So we're gonna, the moon is colonized next year, according to this film. So there you go. So uh, we're a bit behind the eight ball now. We, we should have had this one in the discussion uh, a few weeks back about films that predicted the future and kind of got it wrong. And this is obviously one of them. So, um, and of course this movie was released about three months after the moon landing. So uh, they were able to slot in a reference to that uh, event occurring as well. Uh, one of the big movies that did come out in 69 was a film called Marooned with Gregory Peck and Gene Hackman. Um, it actually received some really good publicity because of the moon landing, obviously, and it had a very authentic production design, so much so it actually got an, uh, an Oscar for Best Visual Effects, which is kind of groovy. And because it's the story of some dude stuck in a uh, module orbiting the Earth, it was a precursor, effectively, to the real Apollo 13 uh, saga that occurred uh, sometime later with the ship stuck in orbit and the dudes um, running out of oxygen. So how's that for sort of, that was one predicting the future, ironically enough. So uh, there you go. Um, another one was Journey to the Far Side of the Sun, which was actually produced by uh, Jerry, hang on, yeah, Jerry and Sylvia Anderson. And of course, what are the Andersons famous for? You ready for this MPS? Yeah. Bit of, yo, there we go. There we go. We're just going to do the usual thing. So uh, there we go. Now I'm going to bring Jeffro back so he doesn't feel like he's missing out. So there you go. Yeah, exactly right. So, um, Toho, they were very busy this particular year with two monster movies. So, all monsters attack and ga Gamera, uh, Gamera versus Gyron or Giron or whatever else. So, um, the idea is smashing cities. They were having a whale of a time in 69, just busting shit up as you do when you're in, um, in Japan. And of course, Valley of the Guanji came out that year, which of course was a Ray Harryhausen film, which we discussed last week. So there you go. That's how we can connect last week to this week, which was uh, kind of groovy. And I've only got two more to go. Uh, so those who can remember this will be doing very well. The computer wore tennis shoes with a very young Kurt Russell, who's practically a kid. And uh, back then, of course, computers were big ass mainframe things with, you know, it used to fill an entire room with millions of blinking lights. And if you remember Star Trek, there was always blinking lights. So um, that was a very, very popular show, I think, uh, from Disney, which was a kind of groovy. And a lucky, well, last, uh, there are others, but these are the ones I've just picked out for this particular discussion. Um, it's, it's alive! Doesn't that sound groovy? Um, how's this for a story, right? So they rushed this production so fast 
that apparently in one day they did 57 setups, right? Now, you can imagine that was probably really early in the morning right through to really late at night in like you know, before uh, after midnight, before midnight, right? So 57 in a day. And they edited and completed the thing in nine days, right? Nine days, done, dusted, in the can, out, distributed, right? And, of course, what happened? Um, all the critics said they had a really bad acting and really bad this and really bad that and bad editing, all because it was just rushed. So uh, sometimes pushing these thing, things these things through really, really quickly doesn't necessarily work for the benefit of the production. But anyway, it's listed as a 1969 movie, so uh, it's alive. How good is that? Very, very cool. Now, Jeffro, for the last time, are you with us or not? I'll take that as a no. So there you go. <laughs> All right, what do we got down here? So, um, yes, uh, computer war tennis. Oh, so Colin only just saw the computer war tennis shoes just last month. How about that? So, uh, yes. So for those who don't know the story, um, it was a Kurt Russell's character. He has some kind of like hit by electricity or lightning or whatever, and suddenly he's got the brain of a, of, of a computer, uh, which, you know, back in those days was like maybe 300K worth of memory or something, so it wouldn't be much, but uh, it worked for the novelty of the show, so... Very, very, very groovy. So how good is that? MPS, there's anything you want to chuck in before we move on to the next bit? Yeah, I will. I'll chuck in the other movies that made it in, in that year. Easy Rider, uh, Butch, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, um, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, mm. Italian Job, the original version of the Italian Job, uh, Sweet Charity. Uh, what else did we have? The Battle of Britain. How do you spell That's that? About all... broom, 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 broom. What kind of movie is that? Uh, Goodbye, Mr. Chips. And I think that was pretty much it in terms of the, the movies. TV shows in 1969. Uh, there were... Well, the Brady Bunch started in that year. Um, oh, what Very good. The Courtship of Eddie's Father, which I think we had repeats here. The... Uh, Star Trek, obviously, was that was done and dusted by 69. Sesame Street started. That was the other one I wanted to say. Scooby-Doo, the first of the Scooby-Doos. Uh, the original Bill Cosby show. I should, don't know if we should be mentioning Bill Cosby. Uh, and some of the Hanna-Barbera cartoons that came out were The Perils of Penelope Pitstop, uh, as we mentioned the other week. And what else? Monty Python's Flying Circus started in 1969, the precursor to uh, all the... the the few films that they did, H uh, and R Puff and stuff, um, and yeah, that's pretty much about it in terms of those things. All right, so we're going to buzz off. We'll see you next Wednesday, and don't forget to always stay nerdy. Okay, take care, guys. Ta da. <laughs>